Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Today we are checking out one of the most interesting, most unique looking GeForce RTX 3080 graphics cards that I've come across yet. It is of course Palette's GameRock OC. This is a pretty crazy looking graphics card and when plugged in and all lit up, it really is something else. Now, I do suspect that this is going to be a product that you'll either love or hate, and I'm basing that on the response that we received from Patreon members in our Discord chat when I posted a few photos of this thing in action last week. And the response was pretty much either, that's hideous, or that's amazing, where can I get one? So it kind of seems to be a love it or hate it type deal. Personally, it's not something that I would necessarily go for, but I do find the unique look quite interesting, much like what was the case with the G-Skill Royal Memory, for example. Personally, when I install a graphics card in my system, I really never look at it again. Unless, of course, something goes wrong and then I have to look at the thing to try and work out what's going on. So it's optimal for me if I don't have to look at it again between upgrades. This means the only things that are really important for me is performance, temperatures and operating volume, plus a few extra features are nice, such as a dual bias, for example, and that should come in handy should something go wrong and I actually have to look at the thing again. So while there will be some B-roll showing the default rainbow RGB effects, I'm not going to get into all the different lighting effects and whatnot and film all of that for you. You pretty much get the idea, or at least you should. The thing lights up, like, a lot. So let's take a better look around at the Gaming Rock OC, and then we'll tear the cooler off for a better look at the PCB beneath. In terms of dimensions, it's not really that crazy, measuring 304 millimeters long, 136 millimeters tall, and 60 millimeters wide. So it's a 2.7 slot card, which means it takes up three slots. Despite the reasonable dimensions, it is quite a heavy graphics card at 1589 grams, and that makes it heavier than Gigabyte's Gaming OC, the ASUS Tough Gaming, and even the massive MSI Gaming X Trio, so that is very surprising. And that means there is probably a serious amount of metal in this thing. On the front side of the card, we find the crazy looking fan shroud, which is sort of a crystallized design, I suppose you'd say, and it's flanked by some strips of silver aluminium, which looks quite good. Embedded in the shroud are three 90 millimeter fans made from a translucent plastic, and design-wise, they look quite similar to the fans used by Gigabyte. The fans each feature a pair of ball bearings and claim to be IP5X dust resistant. The left and right sides of the card feature plenty of openings to allow air to pass through the heatsink, and on the outer face there is a backlit GeForce RTX and GameRock branding. Though I do feel it would have been better if Pallet didn't include the GameRock and instead opted to center the GeForce RTX branding. They're also positioning the three 8-pin PCIe power connectors towards the middle of the card by connecting them to the PCB, rather than do so with extension cables like what we saw with Gigabyte's Gaming OC. Personally though, I do prefer what Palette has done here as Gigabyte's method blocked quite a bit of airflow and in my opinion wasn't terribly beneficial. Then moving around to the back side of the card, we find a full length aluminium backplate with cutouts at the end to allow air to pass through the card. This could have certainly been opened up much more, but I'm also not sure how much that would have really helped with the cooling performance. So I guess the stylized design method works here. As for the printing on the back plate, I'm not really a fan. It looks like a bit of a mess to me, but it won't impact performance, so I guess it's not really a big deal. Still, having said that, for a card that appears to be all about the looks, I think writing Game Rock on every possible surface wasn't really a great idea. I'm not even joking, there's four Game Rock labels on this thing. Then around at the I.O. panel, we find a base configuration, which includes a single HDMI 2.1 port and three DisplayPort 1.4a outputs. Now let's get down to business and pull the cooler off. Design wise, this is probably the best RTX 3080 I've come across yet. It's certainly up there with the ASUS Tough Gaming. In terms of bracing and structural support, the Gaming Rock is second to none. Firstly, that aluminium backplate is very thick, weighing in at 184 grams, and it features a number of folds that add a tremendous amount of strength. Pallet has also included a number of thermal pads behind the GDDR6X memory chips, and these are designed to remove heat from the backside of the PCB. The backplate's also secured to a large black aluminium brace on the front side of the PCB using 13 screws. This ensures minimal PCB flex, as well as perfect contact for the cooler over the GPU die. The aluminium brace weighs 193 grams, and it is a multi-purpose bit of kit, used not just to strengthen the card, but also to cool the GDDR6X memory and VRM components. 
There's also a number of fins on the top side which increases the surface area for better cooling performance. Pallet has also strategically placed a few thermal pads around the GPU die area, which connects the base plate to the main cooler, and this helps to transfer some of the heat to the larger, more efficient heatsink. Speaking of the main heatsink, it weighs 565 grams and uses half a dozen nickel plated 6mm copper heat pipes to transfer heat away from the copper base and into the aluminium fins. It's a pretty standard design, but it should work well when supported by a large aluminium brace. Moving over to the PCB, here we find a very compact 215mm long board, though it does measure 117mm tall. Still, it's crammed full of components featuring 21 Alpha and Omega 50 amp power stages, 18 of which are used to power the RTX 3080 GPU. Also feeding power into the card are three PCIe 8-pin power connectors. There's also a dual BIOS switch that allows users to switch from the default performance BIOS to a silent BIOS. So that's a nice feature to see, and really, in my opinion, this should be a standard for graphics cards priced over $500. Now, in terms of clock specifications, Pallet lists a core clock frequency of 1860 MHz, which is a 9% boost over the 1710 MHz default spec, and that's the highest factory OC we've seen yet. The GDDR6X memory, though, that's been left at 19 gigabits per second, and this is typical of all factory OC graphics cards. So let's move on to see what clock speeds this model maintains when under load. Here's a look at how the card handles itself in Shut Off the Tomb Raider after 30 minutes of gameplay. The GameRock OC peaked at just 68 degrees in a 21 degree room installed inside the Corsair Obsidian 500D, which has been fully populated with fans. Now, in order to maintain this temperature, the fans on the graphics card spun at 1700 RPM, which is very reasonable as most models we've seen spin their fans between 1800 and 1900 RPM. Now, the typical core clock speed seen during our testing was 1935 MHz, and under the same conditions, that's a 5% increase over the Founders Edition model. So, despite the higher factory OC, we're seeing the same sustained clock speeds as other AIB OC models. Just quickly, this saw power consumption increase by 6% from 323 watts for the FE model to 342 watts with the Game Rock OC. Now, for overclocking, with the limits reached, we saw a peak operating temperature of just 72 degrees, but this time the fans spun at up to 1900 RPM. And again, they weren't terribly loud there. The overclock saw the cores operate at 2 GHz, and the memory also hit 20.6 gigabits per second. Finally, when overclocked, the card sucked down 399 watts, so that is a 17% increase from the stock factory OC configuration. Okay, so let's move into the benchmark graphs. As usual, we're testing with our AMD Ryzen 9 3950X GPU test rig with 32GB of DDR4-3200CL14 memory. The latest drivers available at the time of testing have been used, and for this one we have just a few select games to look at. Like what I did with my previous RTX 3080 graphics card review, I'm not going to pour over the game data and point out all these small 3-5% performance gains. Basically, these RTX 3080 graphics cards have very little OC headroom, and that makes for rather unexciting manual overclocking. Having said that, the Pallet RTX 3080 GameRock OC is one of the better overclocking cards that I've tested so far, though as usual, take the OC results with a grain of salt, as it's more down to luck of the draw type situation with the silicon quality when talking about these higher quality graphics cards. Interestingly, power consumption increases massively when overclocking the Game Rock OC, or at least it will when increasing the power limit. Perhaps this is the reason why this model overclocked slightly better than the MSI, ASUS, and Gigabyte cards that we've already looked at. But again, it could just be down to the silicon quality. Out of the box power draw, though, was comparable to other AIB models that we've tested. Moving on to temperatures, and here we're looking at the GPU die sensor for both the stock and then noise normalized results. As we saw earlier, the GameRock OC runs very cool, peaking at under 70 degrees. And here we're seeing that even when noise normalized, the results are still very good, running just a degree hotter than the Gaming OC, and three degrees hotter than the Tough Gaming and Gaming X Trio. So certainly not the best results I've seen, but pretty darn close and much better than Nvidia's FE model, though of course it is also much larger. The PCB temperature behind the GPU is roughly the same as what we saw with the die sensor, and that made the GameRock OC one of the hotter cards I've tested, but even so, the results were still very good at under 70 degrees. 
Interestingly, the VRM temperature was much more impressive, at least relative to the other RTX 3080 graphics cards that I've tested so far. Again, both stock and noise normalized, so these temperatures kept below 70 degrees, and here the GameRock OEC was the coolest graphics card that I've tested. The GDDR6X temperatures were also very good, and here we're seeing pretty consistent temperatures across the PCB. This is possibly due to how close all the components are placed to one another, and I'd imagine this model has a pretty high thermal density. Anyway, it doesn't appear to have hurt performance, as this palette model is one of the best that I've tested. Love it or hate it, there's no denying that the Palette RTX 3080 GameRock OC is a quality RTX 3080 graphics card, and I have to admit, I was quite surprised to learn just how good it is. At first glance, it's almost hard to take this thing seriously, and you'd be forgiven for thinking it's probably going to be all show and no go, I think is probably the way to put it. I personally, I wasn't expecting it to be particularly impressive in terms of thermals, and instead imagined it to be a bit of a hot, loud, flashy graphics card. But I was wrong, very wrong. The GameRock OC, despite its funky appearance, is a very serious RTX 3080, offering solid out-of-the-box performance, and assuming good quality silicon, solid OC results. I found it to be quiet enough with the performance BIOS, but if you're happy to let the temperatures creep up a little bit, you can opt for the silent BIOS, something you can't easily do with MSI's Gaming X Trio, for example. And just lastly, I've asked Palette three times now for the MSRP, and I've not got an answer, so, I have no idea what the GameRock OC is meant to cost once it goes on sale, though that info is almost irrelevant at this point given that availability of RTX 3080 graphics cards is pretty terrible. But I'd estimate it will cost at least $750 US and no more than $800 US. But of course, that's just a guess, so we'll just have to wait and see once it gets listed online. Overall, the Palette RTX 3080 GameRock OC is a great quality RTX 3080, and I wouldn't hesitate to recommend it, assuming you're happy with more RGB lighting than a Christmas tree. But yeah, very nice card, and well, very interesting. I think we'll leave it at that. So, if you liked this video, you know what to do. You can also subscribe for more content. We do have at least one more RTX 3080 AIB review coming up on the channel shortly. Uh, Beyond that, who knows? We'll just see how things go. But anyway, and then of course there will be RTX 3070s and then some AMD related stuff coming up as well. So if you're interested in seeing all of that, make sure you are subscribed. Also, you can go and subscribe to our Patreon account if you wish. That will give you access to our exclusive Patreon Discord chat where you can chat with Tim and myself and the rest of the awesome Harbour Box community. We have a monthly live stream, which is very cool. And we do that at least once a month. Q&As, behind the scenes videos. Anyway, if you're interested in that, the link for that is in the video description. If not, perfectly fine. And I would like to just thank you for watching this video. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.